Ladies and gentlemen, the Trick Gamers at a Com video if you're like many gamers and waiting for the next generation of graphics cards, which to be fair is a fairly legitimate course of action if you've already got, let's say, an R9 290X or a high-end GTX 700 series, then you might be interested in this bit of news. The Pascal GP100 series chip, which of course will be the successor of Maxwell, will be featuring a 4096-bit memory bus and will feature up to four 8-high HBM2 stacks, which will be running at a rather staggering 1 GHz. Now, from what we understand, and these are rumours, so obviously rumours equals not confirmed, but from what we understand, there are going to be multiple variants, of course, of the graphics card. Now, the first variant will pack four HBM2 stacks, and each of these will be four high, that's HI, and they will be clocked at one gigahertz. Now, from what we understand, this will be aimed at the traditional consumer line of graphics cards that the GeForce typically targets. So, for example, the GTX 780, or the 980, or the 970, something along those lines will probably be utilizing a memory configuration such as this. The second variant will be also equipped with four HBM2 stacks, and they will also be clocked to one gigahertz, but they will be stacked at eight high, once again, HI. Now, the number of high, by the way, is the number of stacked DRAM dies. So, the, while this doesn't actually um, take it into account the base die, for example, logic memory, that type of stuff, but how many are in the total stack, rather than the actual total number of chips in the stack. Now, from what we understand, and once again this is rumours, the 8 high will be limited to quadros and telsas, that type of thing, in other words, for servers and for high-end rendering devices. Your guess is as good as mine whether it's going to make it into the equivalent of the Titan. Let's face it, it's possible but if it does, we're going to be paying out the proverbial nose for it, not that the current titans are exactly a few pennies. Now, Pascal is still slated for release next year. We heard quite a lot of rumours about this, and we know that NVIDIA aren't too happy because apparently AMD have priority on HBM2. Now, this isn't surprising because HBM2 is A, limited quantity, and B, AMD helped to, well, create the the memory. Effectively, the HBM2 standard, or HBM1 standard, is a testament to AMD. They basically helped to uh, pioneer the standard, and they also helped to create the, um, the interconnect as well. So, basically speaking, they're like, hey, we kind of want the HBM2 to begin with for ourselves, which, once this, well, I've said before, isn't great from a consumer point of view you know if you want to get Nvidia but I've got to say this is one of those times where I can actually kind of get behind it because it's like you created the standard it's hardware there's finite supply I can understand AMD basically saying no actually this is kind of ours I can I can understand that point of view I can understand that anyway it will be utilizing 16 nm now from what we understand, both GPUs are going to be uh, 16nm. That would be AMD's next generation cards as well. Now, this is going to be TM TSMC. And from what we understand, it's going to provide a 65% higher clock speed, uh, twice the density, or it's going to utilize 70% less power than its current 28nm technology. That's actually kind of cool. That's, that's actually pretty impressive. This is what TSM, MC, TSMC, Jesus, I can't speak today, have said. Now, obviously speaking, smaller equals more shader cores, more power, more performance. And since NVIDIA at the moment also targeting mobile with, let's say, the Shield devices and so on, it does make some sense. But, while... NVIDIA have 100% confirmed Pascal is going to be utilizing TSMC 16NM. There is still a little doubt. Now, I did just say that AMD are most likely going to be using TSMC, but some people are also murmuring that they're going to be using Samsung. 
Now, Samsung are actually utilizing the 14NM process. Which one is it going to be? Well, it's probably, to be honest with you, dependent on yields. Uh, I know we've talked a lot about yields, so I'm not going to bore you once again with what yields are, but it just makes sense because let's just be totally honest here. They want to maximize their revenue, which makes sense. And it also makes sense from a consumer point of view as well, because you don't want difficulty buying the graphics card. That simple, really. The, the easier it is to buy, the better. It makes it cheaper for the consumer. It makes it easier to purchase. It means there's going to be less price gouging. And it means that you're not going to be raging uncontrollably, as once again, you see Amazon have gotten free GPUs, and each one has been sold, and then eBay scalpers profit or rather unscrupulous websites profit as well we all know what that when that happens i mean that happened way back in the day with amd's x800 series cards if you can remember that far back there were hair there was a hell of a lot of price gouging because amd were the first ones for the generation nvidia were a bit far behind with the i think it was the 6000 series back in the day and quite simply put there was price gouging it really was this was um, the X800 series, jeez, god, that was like early 2000s. Anyway, I'm actually kind of happy about that, but there is one more thing that we need to discuss, and that's NVLink, because there is a little bit of confusion about that. Now, NVLink is actually considerably faster than PCIe 3. How much faster does depend upon multiple factors, the most obvious factor is quite simple it would be the amount of length you've got in your PCIe connection so it's between 5 and 12 but even so it's looking like this is going to be server only so IBM have announced that they're going to be integrating this connection with its PowerPC server CPUs and you might have noticed that server is the operative word this is probably not going to be in, let's say, Canon Lake. I'm not saying it won't ever be, but at the moment, PCIe hits around 16 gigabytes per second, and VLink can be up to 80. I'd like, possibly, to see this, but I don't also know if it's necessarily a prerequisite, a requirement for it. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.